Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to make a master board um, with these colors that you can see on this piece of paper. My daughter made this with a gel plate and I really love the colors she used and I wanted to make the whole piece with these colors. I'm starting out with a new color in metallic. I'm just scribbling around very loosely to break the blank page and to just get something down. Um, the paper that I'm using is the Kenson XL watercolor paper. It has 300 GSM and it's quite heavy and perfect as um, a base for example for artist trading cards or tags, greeting cards, all that kind of stuff. In my next step I also wanted to just bring something onto the background. Um, it's not there to be visible in the end. Well, there will things be visible, but I don't know it at this stage of the process. And also the neo colors are water soluble. So this um, crayon will mix into the next layers that I'm going to add to my uh, process, to my page. Um, the title says pushing through the ugly stage and that is something I think is quite difficult sometimes because very often um, there is an ugly stage especially when you're working in mixed media and when you are working with many layers. There often is an ugly stage and um, I think sometimes we tend to just say oh that doesn't look good and we are stopping and just throw the stuff away or lay it aside to work on it later. But that's something that is, um, you shouldn't do that because there, it's normal to have an ugly stage. And I think almost every time when you push through this, um, you will get something pretty, a really nice result. What I'm doing now is I'm stamping with acrylic paint randomly all over my surface. I'm using a stamp from the Kauf Collection number three. Um, you don't have to stamp. I just thought it might be a nice pattern for the background. You can also just paint something or maybe do some stenciling. Um, I used the acrylic paint because it, it get, gives you a more painterly and artsy look. And I also wanted to have um, not a stamping ink underneath those layers. Um, I'm not sure why at this moment, because in the end I will do some usual stamping on top of the finished project. But if you maybe do a piece of artwork that you want to hang up onto your wall, you make maybe something bigger from it. Um, then it might be better not to use stamping ink because it's not light fast and then stamping with um, acrylics is better and also maybe in a later step you want to go on top with pastels or, or stuff like that and then you maybe have to fix the whole uh, piece with a fixative and when you have stamping in or ink on it this might react with your fixative and that might bleed then and ruin your the whole piece. So um, that's the reason why I picked the acrylic paint for my background stamping. You can see I'm picking all those colors that um, is on that palette my daughter created. And this time I'm applying the paint. It's a gold ochre with a um, silicone a tool. It's usually meant to be used in the kitchen but I like to use it to apply paint gesso or gel medium. And I just randomly throw the paint onto my paper. I try not to think about what I'm doing. I just want to throw it down. And I will do the same with the next uh, color. It's the Naples Yellow Greenish. Um, I'm pretty sure she used those paints directly from the tubes onto, onto the jelly plate. She didn't mix anything, so it's quite easy for me to recreate the color palette. This time I'm using a, 
a brush to apply the paint and the reason is that I wanted to create different textures on my background. I will let this dry completely um, before I come back and add even more layers to this piece. And what I did was I searched for some collage papers from my stash that are matching the color palette. I picked different types of papers. Um, here I'm using a rice paper that was printed with a jelly plate and I'm sticking it down with gel medium as um, um, this should be a background for me that is that is sealed and that can be used for all kinds of different projects. I'm using the gel medium. When I do something um, loose in my art journal, I use a glue stick because it's just not so time consuming. And also it's it doesn't take much effort to stick papers down with a glue stick. It's a bit harder with gel. I'm using that catalyst blade to smooth out the papers to make sure it does not wrinkle on my page. I'm speeding up this part of the video where I'm gluing down collage papers. If you paint along with me, just pause the video maybe um, as it has to dry afterwards. You, 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 you must pause the video um, if you play along. So um, I thought I will do this in a time-lapse mode just until I am done with the whole background. And I think this is the part where the ugly stage comes into play because I feel the more layers I'm adding here, the uglier it gets. Um, but that's just temporary because we will change this when we create our finished pieces today I will make artist trading cards I didn't know this in the beginning I thought about making maybe some bigger pieces or tags but then I I thought artist trading cards are just fine and I really like making these little pieces of artwork By the way, the paper with the black dots and this one I'm having here, these are tissue papers and I always collect them when we buy new shoes for the kids. They're always um, in the packaging and these are great to make um, collage papers too. They are just a bit thin but that's great because you get uh, quite a transparent layer onto your work and that's what I really like. I will lay this aside and let it dry completely. This was the stage where I decided to make some artist trading cards out of this. And I decided to do some normal stamping to create texture already on the background. Um, I picked quite a neutral stamp so it fits every card. Uh, later after I, I've, I'm cutting the cards I will do some extra stamping depending on the layout of the card. But this is just to bring in some more interest and texture. And doing it on the whole sheet of paper makes it just a bit quicker. 
Um, yes, I'm using stays on ink because it dries super fast on an acrylic surface. I believe you can use the archival ink, but it takes a lot longer to dry. And I would not recommend using Versafine Clear on an acrylic surface. Versafine Clear is a great stamp pad. I love it for watercolor paper, but it does not dry very well on a non-porous surface. I picked another stamp. It's um, a stamp with some text on it. I think text is always nice and I love it in contrast to the bold and and not so detailed marks on the page and I think it's quite a nice texture for a background. I will give you all the links of the stamp sets I'm using in the video description and there's also a link to my blog where you can have a closer look at the finished cards um, because in the end it will move quite fast through all the cards I'm making today and I make not um, all the cards that I can cut out of this piece of paper today uh, but I will share the others over on our shop blog over the next weeks so um, you can also check that out because I'm going to use everything from this piece of paper. But in case you have too much white in the end, you can always come back and add something. And you can also in a lot of areas see the background shining through the white paint and that's also quite interesting. I feel that background looks a bit flat because there is not a big range of tonal value. I think there is not enough white space. And this is what I'm going to do now. I come in with white acrylic paint and just throw it over the background. Of course, I make sure not to cover up everything. And as I wanted to make smaller cards, I try not to make too big areas of, of white. Um, so I, I don't have a one card that is completely white in the end. I picked a twig and I'm doing some scratching into the wet paint. This is quite an interesting technique and you can create really nice marks uh, onto your background. Again, I'm going to let this dry completely and what I'm doing then is I will throw on some acrylic ink in metallic, exactly the same color my daughter used on that uh, color palette piece. And here you can see I throw on some of the acrylic ink and I also let this dry. And here I'm back with a viewfinder. You can use a viewfinder or you can cut your paper just into uh, several cards of the right size then you will get more cards but I prefer using a viewfinder to find really nice uh, layouts of the cards and this is what I'm going to do. I will um, search for nice backgrounds, mark them out and then cut them to the size of an artist trading card which is 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. If you cut the whole piece of paper just into pieces of the of the card size, you might end up with a lot of cards that don't have a perfect background. And that's what I didn't want. There will be some leftovers and I will give you some tips what you can do with those. I'm back and I cut 10 artist trading cards. I think that's quite a lot. And I also cut two tags and I have some leftovers and I will give you some tips on those as well. 
Here it is one that has a lot of white. I will add a little bit more to this one later in the process. And what I'm doing now, I have a lot of prepared images laying here and I just take them out and have a look what I like and what fits the card backgrounds. And then I'm going to make some artist trading cards. I decided to create six cards now and leave four for um, a later date. And what I did with the leftover pieces, I cut these tabs. And these are quite lovely to use in your art journal or junk journal, or also on the sides of these artist trading cards, for example. I picked two of the cards I have a, ma a main image for, and I'm stamping. A little bit of that gritty image from our pencil mox 4. Um, this is part of the process that I like the most. Um, just finishing up something, I think that's quite a lot of fun. For these cards I wanted to use the bumblebee and the bee from our inky friends. I had them already cut out laying in my stash and I wanted to have something they can sit on. And I decided to pick our mixed media borders and stamp them into the middle of the card so they can sit there. And this is what I'm going to do later, gluing down all these pieces. I will share the finished cards in the end of the video. And I think what I'm doing here on these cards is I will give them a inked edge because I feel that looks kind of a frame and it makes the card stand out a bit more, I feel. For the next pair of cards, I picked our inky mushrooms and they are paper pieced with jelly prints. I have a video tutorial for this technique also on my YouTube channel and I will link it up in the, in the video description. To give them also something to grow on, I'm using a black watercolor pencil and just draw a bottom to the cards. I'm going to let this dry so I can come back and add a little bit more of background stamping or mark making. And the next two cards will also get some mushrooms on them and here I am picking those textured mushrooms and with these um, I made the video where I shared the paper piecing technique. Uh, you maybe already watched that 
and I will do the same here give them something to sit on and also do some background stamping here I decided to do my stamping first so um, I don't have to wait until my my pencil is dry before I can do the stamping and I picked a numbers stamp from our mixed media marks uh, stamp set Let's come back to the other cards where I have already painted the bottom. It's almost dry and I can lay out the mushrooms and see um, if I miss something on the background. I'm happy with those and I will share them with you in the end. And this is where you could probably bring in these tabs. Just stick them to the edges of an artist trading card. Why not? That looks quite nice and is a bit interesting and different from the usual cards. And here I also have a look how I wanted to arrange the mushrooms and if I want to do some extra stamping. And I decided to just ink up the edges of the cards because I really like that. And I will finish up all the cards off camera and then share it with you over on my blog. And you will see some finished um, photos at the end of this video. And I hope you enjoyed the video and you find it inspiring. And I hope you will leave me a comment and we will see us next time. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.